Ineos Alea from floridacinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to create this nice ribbon transition in After Effects. It's actually really simple to create but if you don't feel like following this tutorial or you want a little bit more variation we offer a pack on our website that you can buy and then you can change the colors, change it up, we have different styles of transitions and then you can export them for whatever video editing software you have for example for Premiere and then you can use these transitions for your projects. So definitely check out the link in the description for that. But for those that do want to know how to create a ribbon effect, let's get started. Alright, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and I will create a new composition. Make it full HD and I'll rename it transition and there we go. I'll make it around 5 seconds long so that means something like 150 and I'll click OK. Then I will right click and create a new solid layer and just name it 01 or whatever and give it a color to whatever you want it to be as a result or you can uh, use a fill color afterwards. Now what I want to do is actually make the scene up. So how do I want my transition to be made? So what I will do is actually I'll drag it in like so, position it over here using shift that will stay in a straight line and I will position it over here. Then I will duplicate my solid layer and position it on in the middle on average. We'll click here on the title and action save and click here uh, to select it. And then just make sure it's in the center or what you can do as well is go to align and just center it out that way. <laughs> Could be easier. Um, I'm going to unselect my title action save. There we go. And then I will duplicate it once more, put it below uh, the top one and then put it right here at the end. Okay, so now we do realize that our middle one is a little bit thicker and it's overlapping our other ones, but we can just trim it down a little bit and just try to give it an equal amount of width. You can uh, calculate that out if you want to, but for this it will work. And I will press W on the keyboard and then rotate it something like, just rotate it to something that whatever you think fits. Now we can uh, make it a little bit thicker to cover it up completely and make it longer. Uh, something like so and then I will make it a little bit dark just so you can see what the overlap is actually uh, doing here so I will go to generate fill and I will use a dark red color or we can actually use this as a light color and uh, copy your fill and paste it on the other two and make these darker because that would make a little bit more sense and there we go so now what we want is to do the actual transition. So we'll focus on the first one here. I will actually rename this to 03 and this to 02. So this is the first animation. We'll go into effects, transition, linear wipe. And then we'll click on the stopwatch for the transition transition completion. And then we'll make it 100% at first and then go one second forward um, or let's say 10, 10 frames for now and just zero this out. Of course it's going to do the wrong animation. We want it to come from here upwards. So what we'll do is actually rotate it uh, 180 degrees. And now it's going to start from the bottom and going up. And now what we want to do is copy these keyframes, copy with Control C, go to O2 and then go to the end of O1. So right here at this keyframe, we're going to O2 and paste our effects. So if we press U on the keyboard, we'll have our effects here. Of course, our angle is going to be reset and it's uh, it has a, well, it needs a different kind of angle. So we'll try and figure that one out. So let's say it's zero actually, because um, we actually rotated our solid. So it's actually looking at this as a composition. So it's actually using this as a reference. So zero degrees, that makes it easier for us. So it's going up, it's going down, and now we want it to go up again here. So we'll copy these keyframes once more, go to the end of these keyframes and click on the last solid and paste it again. And here we want it to go up, so also make it 180 and there we go, it's going up. So now we'll have something like this. Okay, cool, but now we also need it to um, make it disappear right here. So we'll press U on the keyboard for all of these keyframes so we can see them all in our composition. And right here where the complete scene is filled up, we want to go back to our original one and click on that keyframe and move again one, well, 10 frames and make it 100. Of course, what it's going to do, it's going up and it's going down again, but we want it to start from the bottom, but it's actually using this angle. So we'll have to go to the first keyframe here 
and click on create a new keyframe, press U on the keyboard uh, again so you can see the keyframe right here and then offset it just one frame forward and then on this one we'll rotate it to zero and that will change it up. So it's going up and then it's also going to disappear from the same position that it actually started. And now it's actually like it's fading out. And then right here we want to do the same thing for this for the second one here. So click on the stopwatch, go 10 frames forward, make it 100. And of course we'll have to switch the uh, angle here. So go one frame forward, click on the stopwatch and go one frame forward, make it the opposite of your actual value. So that's 180 here. And that's going to make it disappear right here. And then go back to your third one. And let's do the same thing once more. Click on the stopwatch for the completion, 10 frames off 100%. And then for the angle uh, here at the beginning, one frame forward, click, uh, well, backward and click on the angle, go one frame forward and make it zero. And that will make it fit up. So if you are going to select everything and just reveal all the keyframes, we'll see it will look something like this. And what you can do is also use some easy ease if you want to buy. I think this already looks pretty cool, um, but you can like select all of your um, animation keyframes, not the, not the angled one. Once uh, holding shift, you can select all of these and then right click keyframe assistance, easy ease and go into the graph editor uh, to maybe fix them up a little bit more. So you can drag these up and these in here and that will give you a kind of animation like this, which also looks pretty cool. Really depends on what you're after. Um, but yeah, you can see the possibilities this way. You can also add some gradients if you want to, that might make it look a little bit better as well. Um, but like right here on the second one, we actually, we actually want to add some drop shadow. So it's actually looking like a 3D depth. So what we'll do is go to the layer and go to layer styles and add a outer glow. We don't add a drop shadow because drop shadow is going to allow us to add something to a specific angle. So we'll have some shadow here, but not here. And I want shadow on both sides. So I'm using a glow instead as a shadow. So I'll open up my outer glow right here and make this black. And then for the blending mode, I'll make this normal. And now you should see it here on the edges. If we're going to make it a little bit bigger using the size here, we can now see on the edges we have our shadow. So make it as big as you want. Something like this will do fine. And of course, I won't keep it as a black color. I will make it something like a nice dark red color. And there we go. So now we have some nice shadows. You can also tweak the opacity a little bit if you think it's a little bit too much. Um, but I prefer to work with a different color as well because the opacity of a black isn't always what I'm after. So uh, yeah, you can switch it up that way a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit bigger here in the size and a little bit darker in color. And there we go. And I actually want to change the color of the uh, middle stroke here. So that's the second one. I will add a gradient to this. So go to layer, layer styles, gradient overlay, and then I'll go into the added gradient and just make it uh, something like close to this color. Well, actually pick this color and make it a little bit brighter. And then for this one, we'll do something similar, maybe a little bit brighter or more intense and just uh, mix it up a little bit. And I, and I made a little mistake. I actually added the, the gradient of our outer glow. We want to edit the gradient for our solid layer. So there we go. Okay, and that's better. And there you go, you have a nice transition like this. So mix it up, add some gradients to some uh, to add some 3D depth. Uh, you can do some really cool things with it. But if you speed it up, you can also just select everything together. So go to layer pre-compose transition 01 comp. And then of course, if you think it's taking too long, currently it's taking like two seconds to complete, you can go to right click time time stretch and make it 50 and that's going to make it shorter. That way you'll have it pretty quickly here. So it's going to take one second instead of two. 
And there we go. We'll can, we can trim it down using the trim here of our composition. So press N on the keyboard, right click trim comp to work area. And now we have a nice transition that we can export for other software if you want to, because if you click over here, you won't have a background. So you can export it without a background to use in your video editing softwares. If you don't know how to export without a background, I do have a tutorial on that. So be sure to check that one out. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.